This hour has 22 minutes. With J.B. Dixon, Frank McMillan, and Sidney Zabistin check. Good evening. Preston Manning, encouraged by polls that show older voters are attracted to his party, waded into new territory this week. He went after the elusive Generation X vote by addressing a group of younger Canadians. His message of fiscal restraint and deficit reduction, however, fell on hostile ears. Active, political, actively a culture of Would you turn off that gentleman's microphone? <laughs> Before he was driven from the auditorium, Mr. Manning, in a last-ditch effort, was quoted as saying, in the words of the late John Lennon, all we are saying is give the American-style two-tiered health care system a chance. In Toronto, a former court reporter claims that an Ontario judge rubbed up against her at an office party and said, that's not a roll of quarters you're feeling their baby. <laughs> this raises a lot of troubling questions. Come clean, judge. If it wasn't a roll of quarters, what was it then? A roll of loonies? <laughs> or maybe a roll of lifesavers? And another thing, if it was a roll of quarters, was it a full roll or a half roll? <laughs> and if it was a half roll, what happened to the other half? <laughs> and what does this say about the justice system in this country when a man with only half a roll in his pants can go around deciding other people's fate? <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Frank? Jean Chrétien told a crowd of over a thousand supporters in Hamilton that, quote, if elected, honesty and integrity will be back in political life. After the laughter died down, <laughs> Chrétien said, but seriously, folks, I will be opening for Howie Mandel at the Comedy Barrel on the 27th. This hour has 22 minutes, has analyzed all available election data. We're going to go out on a limb here. We're going to be primetime news and CTV news to the punch. We have just 165 hours before the polls close, and already our election desk is predicting a Mel Hertig majority. I repeat that this our election desk has declared a National Party sweet majority. We go now to National Party headquarters in Edmonton for this reaction. Mel Hertig, a happy Canadian tonight. Yes. You've got to hand it to that Mel. Truly a dark horse. Mel who? The wife of fugitive warlord Mohammed Farah Adid has turned up in, of all places, London, Ontario. The woman, known only as Debbie Adid, is now living with her children in a subsidized apartment and receiving welfare. She joins us now. Miss Adid, how are you today? Fine. Now, how did you come to be the wife of such a notoriously violent man? Well, I met him at Sparkles, and I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a warlord. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, I'm a warlord. And, you know, I thought, wow, a warlord. And, and what first attracted me to him was, well, he's a warlord. <laughs> And he looked like Dustin Hoffman, only shorter. So, so uh, obviously now you are very close to Mr. Adid. You're the one to tell us what makes him tick. You mean, why is he a warlord? Yes. Well, I thought about this, and I think it's because he's a warlord, because he's really sensitive and he's easily hurt, so it's sort of a protection device. But the United Nations considers Mr. Adid a menace who must be stopped. Now, what do you have to say to that? Oh, well, the United Nations don't know him like I do. <laughs> He's actually funny. <laughs> it kills me, and not just me. <laughs> a lot of people say he slays them. <laughs> But, Miss Adid, you're on welfare. You have nothing. If Mr. Adid has money for armies and weapons, why not money for his family? Why has he abandoned you? No, 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 no. I says to him, don't bother visiting. Stay in Mogadishu. 
Because every time he visits, even for the weekend, they knock my doll. It's wicked. <laughs> but he is sweet, you know? Like, sure, he lies and kills and maims and steals, but he don't drink. <laughs> Mrs. Adid, the UN has spent millions and millions of dollars trying to find Mr. Adid, and yet you say you have been in constant contact with him. How is this possible? Sir, it's in the phone book. <laughs>for an organization that delivers meals to shut-ins is upset. Mr. Jimmy Cole had no idea some of the people he delivers meals to are HIV positive and he's very concerned. We are now joined by Mr. Cole to tell us his story. Jimmy, what exactly are you worried about? Uh, well, Sydney, there's this guy that I deliver potato salad to right now. I'm thinking, now, I've never met this man because his mother comes to the door all the time. But I'm thinking, like, what happens if he's upstairs and he falls down and cuts himself, and then she falls down on him, cuts herself, then she's tainted. And then I am downstairs with the potato salad. I accidentally cut my hand on the potato salad. She's coming down over the steps to say good morning and whatever. She trips, falls, lands on me. I'm at risk. Are you taking more precautions because of your fear? Yes, Sydney, definitely. I am now wearing a condom at all times when I'm on the truck. I am no longer sharing needles with Juan, the Haitian guy that I make the deliveries with, and I basically cut the one-night stands down to a bare minimum, and I practice safe sex most of the time, unless, of course, like, I know the girl or I've seen her around town a couple of times or something like that. Well, sir, I think you are at risk, but I don't think it's from the people you make deliveries to. What? Get a click. Get a clue. There you go, ignorance. Still claiming a ridiculous number of victims daily. As the old nursery rhyme goes, the grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. But does he? <laughs> Prince Andrew, Duke of York, visited Canada recently, and his men are the focus of this week's special report by this hour's investigative unit, that would be me, which filed this exclusive story. <laughs> The royal family has always jealously guarded its secrets, but these days, that's getting harder and harder to do. This hour has 22 minutes, has learned exclusively that the grand old Duke of York does not in fact have 10,000 men. MI5 has asked us not to reveal exactly how many. It could be more, it could be less. We do know he has some men. There are men here. Men named Oliver, men named Tristan, men named Moria. Also present today, a Prince Andrew lookalike, whose job it is to draw sniper fire away from the Prince. Royal watchers were out as well, some in royal red, keen to photograph the much-touted 10,000 men. But they were disappointed. The Prince himself seemed oblivious to the presence of our camera until we put to him the kind of hard-hitting question that this hour has 22 minutes is famous for. A program which asks the kind of questions that need to be asked. Your Highness, who do you like in the World Cup? <laughs> amazing, <an> amazing <laughs> Frank. That was a great question, Frank. Thank you. When you've been in the business as long as I have, you go with your hunches. Now, as a public service, we go to no-name candidate Marg Delahunty with her address to the nation. Marg? Hi. I'm Marg Delahunty. I'm running as a candidate at large in the federal election, and I intend to win. So today, I'd like to extend the hand of friendship to Mr. Lucien Bouchard. And first and foremost, Lucien, I'd like to say, why can't we get together and work together as a team? Oh, sure, there's been a history of five, six, seven hundred years of animosity and, all right, sometimes downright hatred between the English and the French. 
But personally, I am willing to forget the five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten, what difference, number of times your crowd, the French, burned St. John's to the ground. Come on, let's leave behind that old raping, burning and pillaging. That's history. Let's put it behind us in the interest of building a strong Eastern Canadian bloc. Together we can dominate the country. I've changed. Yes, I've changed a lot. And in order to get to Ottawa, at whatever cost, I've written a letter to Mr. Preston Manning suggesting an East-West reform bloc coalition kind of thing. Well, I've always enjoyed Mr. Manning's speeches, and I'm sure they're even more edifying in the original German. So, if, as the polls indicate, you're interested in open, self-serving greed and dishonesty, then mark an X for me. Mark Delahunty on October the 25th. Why shouldn't I have a go at the trough? In Haiti, the wave of violence continues. We are hearing reports now of how it's not safe, even for the press. We talk now to our foreign correspondent, Tim McMillan. Hello, Tim. Hello. Can you tell us, are you personally in any danger? Can you tell us what the mood is like in Port-au-Prince tonight? No. And why is that, Tim? Because I'm at the airport. Which airport, Tim? Pearson International. In Toronto. I see. How about those J's? Yes. How about those J's, Tim? But why aren't you in Haiti tonight? Well, apparently, I missed the flight. There is another in several hours, and I should be able to make that one. I know what you're probably thinking, but this has happened to me before. You remember I missed the whole reunification thing. Wall came down. Where was I? But I have a good feeling on this one, Frank. I didn't forget my passport. I do have some spending money. I am traveling light, only two bags. And with any luck, I should be in Haiti sometime later this week. Thank you, Tim. We look forward to your report whenever it arrives. Geez, Frank, it was uh, awful good of you to get your brother that job at the network. <laughs> We live in this helplessly democratic country, and now it looks like we might end up with a separatist as leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Now, you know, that job, well, it comes with a few perks, like the salary, just, uh, jeez, $117,000 a year, a whole whack of servants, and of course, the house. Stornaway, a 38-room mansion. Now, who owns this house? Well, we do. The taxpayers. We are the landlords. So, it is in my capacity as one of the many landlords that I would like to raise a few concerns, such as, what would the block do with historic Stornaway? I mean, if they want to destroy our country, can we trust them with the rugs? Do you think the Bloc Quebecois are going to take off their boots in the front porch this Christmas? I don't think so, see? I say, if the Bloc makes it to Stornoway, first thing we do, get a damage deposit. The equivalent of first and last month's rent. Then, we go in there with a video camera. We document every square inch of the place, and the minute they touch a curtain, move a plant, whatever, wham! Get them with the kick-out notice. The whole lot of them can move out to the Chateau Laurier somewhere, and they can just go about their business of destroying our country on their own dime. Simple as that. Fall's new television season started with a bang as CBC's reality-based cult hit Information 411 hit the airwaves. The call came in at 10.30. The guy was in distress. He needed a number, but it seemed as if he had a blocked airway. So the first thing I did was try to figure out if he'd swallowed something. 
My wife had put forward the idea of my mother-in-law coming for a visit, and I had swallowed it. He was in trouble. I had to act fast. Not breathe. Buy paint. Okay. I need number paint shop. Paint shop. Come on into the paint shop. Okay, are you alone in the house, sir? Mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law is there with you. No, mother-in-law coming. Visit must paint guest room. Mother-in-law. I knew that if I could just keep him on the line and keep him breathing regular, that I could find the number for a reputable paint shop and connect him with that establishment. She's coming Sunday. Oh, God, help me, please. I knew he was starting to panic. I was afraid we were going to lose him, but I had to know the color of the carpets. <laughs> what color is the rug, the main color? Oh, my God, too many blue and green, too many. Blue and green washing machine. I can't, I can't just pick the colors. I can't pick the colors. All right, hang on there, Roger. Just stay with me now. I can't go seven times. I can't stand my heart. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't my car. I can't. You're going to have to speak more slowly, Roger. I can't decide on the color myself. You, you can decide on the color. Yes, you can. Yellow. 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 She likes yellow. She likes yellow. I knew this guy was in no shape to handle a lot of color swatches. I had to make a quick decision. I chose Sunny Egg Morning, number 14, and had the guys bring it over. I don't know how she did it. Uh, the colors in our house were all autumn. And somehow or other, out of the blue, she just picked yellow and it fit. My mother-in-law and I never, ever got along. But after this visit, somehow, because of the yellow in the front room, I guess, uh, we started to become really good friends. I just do my job. I try to help. I usually just give numbers. But sometimes you have to go that extra step further, and it's rewarding. Call it instinct. It's just what makes me good at my job. I'm an operator. I give numbers, that's all. When it touches someone, that's great. I owe her a lot. I'm glad I called information 411. The following is a free time political broadcast. On behalf of the Newfoundland Separation Federation, Jerry Boyle. Hello, I am Jerry Boyle. At this time, I would like to clear up the recent rumor that Jerry Boyle's family were circus people. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's true that my family did travel a fair bit when I was younger. We did keep small animals, and one of my aunts sported several tattoos visible during the hotter months. But to set the record straight, my family is not now and has never been a circus family. Not that there is anything wrong with being a circus family, since there are no finer people working in show business today than circus family people. And I am not only saying that to get that much valued circus family vote. People say to me, go away, Jerry. You are too soft on Kim Campbell. Well, perhaps at campaign start, I was somewhat smitten with Ms. Campbell. Her doe-like eyes, her bird-like laugh, her boundless energy, that of a hyperactive child. But all of this has changed. Ms. Campbell has referred to me as a village idiot. So now the bloom is off that rose, and I say to her that not only will I be elected, but in future, that term will read, villagely challenged person, Prime Minister Jerry Boyle. So remember, on election day, if you can mark an X, you're my kind of people. Everybody's talking about the weather, so why shouldn't we? Here's a bit weatherman to tell you what the weather's going to be. JB. Well, first of all, looking out to the west coast, we see that it is harvest time in the Gulf Islands of British Columbia, which means a marijuana front is quickly moving across the country, and we are predicting big red buds of sensimilia the size of my head on the streets of Toronto, all points in between 
by week's end. Now, for those of you who are cross-addicted, you'll be very happy to hear that a gigantic booze and cigarette system continues to flow freely into the country close to Cornwall. And of course, that comes with intermittent gunfire. Moving out east now, we see that a cold system of law enforcement has stopped a massive hash system dead in its tracks off the coast of Cape Breton, causing near drought-like conditions in most of the Maritimes. Too soon to tell, though, whether or not that will have any effect on Montreal. I doubt it. Looking now to Newfoundland, we see that someone from Halifax will be the cause of random acid showers on the East Coast, just in time for the big battle of the bands this coming weekend. Well, that's it for the drug forecast. Back to you. Travel tips. It's never wise to take a ride through narrow mountain streets on a bus in a country where they believe in reincarnation. <laughs> Especially India, where hundreds of people on their way to weddings plummet over mountainsides daily. If you're invited to a wedding in India, just say, no thanks. <laughs> Bring me a piece of boomy when you come back. <laughs> then, buy your own piece of boomy at the shop, because pretty good chance you won't be seeing your pal later on. This hour has 22 minutes scoop line. Thanks to all those people who faxed us last week. Do you have any rumors, scandals, or half-truths? Fax dirt now. 902-420-4764. That's 902-420-4764. Well, what a week. What a week. But sometimes you just got to ask yourself, good God, what kind of world do we live in? And... Why did I buy those pink shoes? Yes, and I think it was Yasser Arafat who said it best when he said, and quoting, Yasser Maka Halamaka Amahala Amahaka. Well, that's the way we saw the world this week. See you in two weeks' time. We won't be here next Monday because it's election day, and election day is bone marrow day, and I'm a regular donor. Good night. Good night. Guess who was at my door today now? Who was at your door? Yeah. Dog Henning. Nice. I said to him, I said, Dog, guess what? I hate magic. <laughs> and then I said, Do you bounce? Oh. What'd he say? He said, Yes, I bounce. So I oh. said, Bounce then. You wouldn't bounce. So I said, If I got to come out on the step, you'll bounce. You'll bounce all the way down the water street.